apologize. In the very beginning, it was pointed out to me that uh, the uh, title of my talk is inadvertently offensive to some vegans. <laughs> I didn't mean it. I'm going to talk to you about electricity today. Electricity is one of those utilities you just don't like to think about, and yet it's the largest market in the world. It's over a trillion dollars. It's bigger than building and um, computers and cars all put together are still smaller than electricity. And people don't, um, don't like to really get into it because it's one of those things you want to have uh, just be there. Uh, I also, you know, electricity, it's a little bit boring, maybe the least sexy topic, but I think also the most important, uh, which I think for some people in this crowd will turn out to be a little sexy anyway. There was a great big shift that's gone on since when we designed the electrical grid uh, till today. We use it a lot differently than we used to. In the beginning, it was all about inductive loads, like motors, and uh, uh, resistive loads, like heating elements. And in the 1950s, that, has, that started to change. We had this introduction of semiconductors. Not a scary word. I know it seems terribly technical. It just means something that doesn't really conduct. It's only semiconducting. <laughs> they started creeping into our uh, electronic devices. In fact, everything electronic uh, uses um, direct current, which is uh, fascinating. In the very beginning, Edison had an idea about kind of local DC area networks, we might call them a microgrid today, that would uh, produce and use DC power in kind of limited areas. And that kind of fell away. He lost a great debate, some of you know about, with, uh, with Westinghouse using some of Tesla's intellectual property. And AC kind of won the day. And, and that was a good thing uh, for the uh, growth of the national grid, because AC has this great benefit of being able to travel long distances at low losses. But that turns out it's kind of its only benefit. Uh, DC power is what you use in everything electronic. And it turns out that uh, all the power you use today uh, at some point in the value chain passes through power electronics. That's an Intel number saying 80% of the power that uh, you use every day passes through DC devices. So in an important way, we live in a DC world and people just don't realize it. We have billions and billions of compromises in the form of power supplies that turn the power we buy from the utility into DC power for us to be able to use it in our electronics. Well, about 18 years ago, a scientist at the Brookhaven Labs had this idea that um, there were two big trends happening and we needed to take advantage of them. One was the whole idea of distributed renewable power, like solar. Solar panels, by the way, are flat semiconductors, if you think about that. They, uh, a photon hits a, a solar panel and, it, and the panel knocks off a free electron. And that electron, a direct current electron, I might add, dribbles out of the uh, end of the, the solar panel. So <clears throat> there you have these two great big trends, semiconductors in all of our electronic devices and uh, semiconductors in our distributed renewable power. And that brought up this idea, hey, if we're going to do uh, more and more distributed DC power generation at our building site, and we're going to have more and more DC loads at our building site, why not let's create a path to directly couple one to the other? That's this idea of a DC microgrid. And that is uh, coming to pass. It's interesting to think, if you look at the, the uh, picture uh, behind me, you'll see we've got the, the sun falling on a, a solar panel and its output going into a little box and that power traveling into the electronic loads in the building, sometimes supplemented by AC power from the grid or sometimes stored in a battery. Batteries, of course, store and discharge DC. That's what they do. So this idea about adopting a DC power kind of mentality for all of your uh, power needs, uh, it's not only a benefit to solar because you don't have to convert it, it's also a benefit to batteries. Two of the biggest issues in the smart grid debate today are how do we use renewable energy better and how do we integrate uh, storage into our greater system? I think it has to do with creating the opportunity to integrate both of those things closer to the load where you don't suffer the loss. 
the U.S. Department of Energy would tell you that uh, the transmission and distribution of power itself loses around 10 percent of the electricity you had to start with. So just right out of the box, using the power you generate on site in its native form uh, gets you 10 percent uh, ahead of the game. But then not converting that DC power into AC power, which is how it works today, you pick up another, say, 5 percent, and then comes the Big Benny. Going into your battery charger or your laptop or your television, and when you go into those devices, you can avoid the rectifier. And that rectifier, the thing that turns AC into DC, is an incredibly lossy device, like 30 percent lossy device. You can make them more efficient. It's just more expensive. And uh, the market has not yet gone that way, but it will. I'd like you to look closely at the drawing for a moment, because my next slide is almost indistinguishable. Yes. <laughs> In uh, 2008, we had a, uh, a, what we think is a big insight into the whole idea of a, a DC microgrid in your building. And that is the addition. I'm going to go back, just so you, and for those of you that didn't get it. We, we added another arrowhead uh, to make our connection to the grid instead of just one way to make it two ways. Yeah, it sounds silly, doesn't it? But it turns out it was very important because that uh, gives you a way of optimizing all of your loads. You can go for, go for broke, bad expression, go for the limit uh, in your energy efficiency at the building site. And if you should have excess power, then you can export to the grid but not before. Why would you doom those poor electrons uh, to an additional loss when you could have used them on site? So that's the idea of a, of a DC microgrid. That's uh, our lab here in Detroit across the street up in the uh, upper right-hand corner. And uh, down below is an application of uh, DC power in the suspended ceiling grid which is an, an extraordinary idea that just uh, came about uh, three years ago to deliver low voltage DC power through the metal grid of a, of a suspended ceiling system. So instead of having conduit and wires up in the plenum, you would have DC power running around the ceiling over your head in your school or your office or your um, retail shop. So I'm an advocate for creating standards in the same way that uh, the electrical system in our country didn't really take off until the feds and others stepped in to create power standards. You know, it was like the phone company in the beginning. If someone was outside of your phone system, you couldn't talk to them. Likewise, when you were buying power, it might not have been at 110, 220 until about 1919. So I think that there's uh, ample reason for us to be promoting DC power standards today to, to uh, take advantage of the two big trends that started about 50 years ago, that of semiconductors, that of distributed renewable powers, power, as a way to uh, promote and support their broader distribution. 24 volts, 380 volts, uh, that's where we got to with uh, a whole bunch of other stakeholders, or let's call them interested parties, shall we? Uh, I've used a representative 18-month-old uh, who looks a lot like me. To, uh, to bring up this idea of the, the birth of a standard. It's not something that's happened in 100 years. No one's come up with a new power standard in 100 years. There's no department in government in charge of new power standards. Uh, no one at the Department of Energy yet is engaged on uh, DC power standards in buildings. And yet, incredibly, 70 big companies are. We uh, founded uh, about three years ago an effort with um, four companies that's now grown to 70 companies, including our local utility, DTE Energy, SoCal Edison out in California, to promote this idea of, hey, if you, had a, if you have a standard to build to, then people will start making products that conform to it, and you'll be able to take advantage of these uh, benefits of higher efficiency, uh, better integration of renewables, better integration of storage, all of which today are trying to, trying to happen upstream which I think is a great misfortune, because if you think about it, the, uh, the grid was not designed to be a two-way street. The grid is a classic uh, hub-and-spoke uh, arrangement. In fact, if it weren't for the wheel, it would be the best example of that. 
you, we generate power in great uh, in, in, in centralized locations, and it comes out to you as a customer, and you sit at the end of your wire waiting for your product to arrive. We think it's got to get uh, smarter than that. How are we going to uh, achieve these uh, renewable energy goals? There's a lot of uh, press and interest about renewable portfolio standards. Uh, we have uh, just passed one in Michigan in the last couple of years. This is a, a picture of New York State's goals. It says that by uh, 2025, uh, they uh, are legislating 20% penetration of renewables into their power mix. If you look at the slope of the line of how they're doing to get there, they are uh, on track to miss it by 50%. And this is not uh, discussed nearly as much as how the renewable pro portfolio standard will be interpreted and should it be higher. No one's saying it should be lower, uh, but it's, it's interesting to note that about half the states in the union have uh, already passed renewable portfolio standards, but if you look at how they're doing, we're not on a path to get there. How are we going to get there? Well, we think you've got to uh, think differently uh, about what different ways there are you could get there. On the left, that's a 2007 figure showing a, a, half, a half a gigawatt. That's the total amount of solar power connected to the grid today. From 1975 to 19, uh, 2007, we've managed to get only a half a gigawatt of solar connected to the, the grid. We've done more since, but that's the representative number. If my example of the uh, uh, low voltage DC ceilings comes to pass and magically we get 100% adoption, we could deliver into the market every single year 600 megawatts of solar power. I think that's an example of the kind of different way of thinking about the introduction of uh, distributed renewable power that we have to do. Here on the right, that 415 million, that rep represents the uh, market value of all the inverters in the market. An inverter is the thing that connects solar to the grid today. You can see it's a little market still as of 2008. If we were to uh, attach solar power to the motors in our air handling equipment, and this is through the, the products of just one company and just one application, it would be five times the size of what we've been able to do in the conventional paradigm of bringing solar into mainstream use. I was proud to uh, author a paper that uh, Yale published earlier this year with a uh, former general counsel from the Department of Energy. We concluded there that uh, just through an improvement in the architecture of power delivery, uh, we could uh, raise the efficiency of the addressable load by over 20%. That equates to 8% of the total load or about what it takes to power California. And it's not just Yale. We have other smarty pants uh, universities here at home and around the world that are uh, interested in what we're doing. Uh, Non-governmental organizations like Real have uh, been pushing this around the world at uh, Copenhagen and other places. And I can tell you, having been uh, uh, shouting in a ca uh, canyon for a while, that there is growing uh, interest and support which I would invite you to uh, discover more about with me, if you care. The developing world, if you think about it, it's the same, same issue around cell phones. A lot of people advocate uh, bringing cell phones into, into countries that don't yet have uh, wired systems as a way of skipping to the next generation. We want to skip to the next generation uh, with DC power systems. They used to be... Uh, in your uncle's cabin, the weird uncle you didn't see very much. He would have DC devices and LED lamps. I'm telling that you're going to see those DC off-grid kind of uh, loads popping up in your supermarket and uh, in your office building. The DC house concept is uh, uh, growing. and We're doing that uh, here in uh, Detroit, I'm proud to say. We're going to do a retrofit of uh, five existing buildings here in Hamtramck, and we're going to build one from the ground up in New York State. So. My best graphic is the last. I love this idea of a standard. A standard is something you raise up on the battlefield to uh, rally people behind it. Or it's a boring book you never refer to. I prefer the, uh, the flag on the battlefield and invite you to, uh, to think about it and regard the thing that you want to see as changed as not just something you see, but something you support. Thank you. <laughs>